I just wanted to ask you guys really fast, do you ever do this when you distribute toilet paper, you know, TP around the house? I mean, this is how I do it. <laughs> All six rolls. <laughs> And that was a three minute process and I'm facing my fear today. So food and gas is something that I really avoid. It's the social anxiety and the whole, am I gonna miss a step? Is my car gonna blow up? Am I gonna forget something? Is there a problem? I don't like going in to do cash, but I prefer paying with cash and in person versus use a card. So that's the human interaction and it's fine. I know it's always gonna be fine. And I really need to start my car because I can see my breath. That means I'm really cold. But it's just, it's not a big deal. Um, something that I found with my very shy, now slight speech impediment that has greatly improved over the years and my age. Anyway, it's that I have to avoid certain words and things. For example, the number four, four is a word that I can say easily. But I couldn't say maybe six or I'm going to sit around it. Se seven. You know, like there are times when I'm fluent and the words just flow and there are other times when they just don't and so I would have to wait for a car to pull out of a number like a stall to get gas right if it's one that I can or can't say it just it, it would depend and sorry they're doing construction on the other half of the gas station area but anyway um I'm in somebody else's spot I bet maybe they need number four as well so that it's easy for them to say if they go pay for cash but anyway um I just wanted to share that. My parents, they drive my car a lot and they will use it for errands. It's kind of a way for me to give back because they live at home and everything. They really help me out that way. But sometimes they offer to get gas because they know it's a fear of mine and I really do avoid and dread it. But I'm just trying to do adult things. I want my own place in about five to six months time and I need to do baby steps to get there. And anyway, let me get going. I've rambled on enough. But yeah, I just wanted to share that, um, face your fears, even if they're really, really small and they're not a big deal, it's really nice to face them. I don't know what to say, but I have a lot to say, and yeah, I'll just start by saying this. I went to my sister's, just got back, and I told my brother and my dad the good news, and my mom I'll tell later because she's not home right now. I don't want to bother her. She's out and about. But it was cool to talk to my Ash, my Ashley, and talk to my sister Ashley about it first. And just immediately after I got the good news, and I'm leaving in suspense, I'll just tell you what it was. I got a phone call while, while I was at my sister Ashley's, and basically, I have gone from morning kinder part time para to working all day, six hours a day, both morning and afternoon, two different students, a girl and a boy kindergarten and that's a step up from before because I was going to be broke from the new year to the end of the school year until I could be full-time first grade I think that's the plan um next school year but that is pretty great because I have been thinking and overanalyzing and worrying about when I can move out and yeah so the extra pay will be very, very nice. Um, I'm just feeling so conflicted with life and wondering if I'm making the right decisions by staying here in town and other decisions I've made. Um, and I talked to my sister about this and I was like, this sounds so dumb, but do you think I am like allowed to quit even though I said I could be here long term? <laughs> and she's like, of course you can quit. You know, that's always an option if you're employed to quit. And I don't really owe anybody anything. I really have to take care of myself and do what's right. So 
Anyway, that's what I wanted to say. So, it is good news. Um, I just had to figure out when I can move out. Um, hopefully as soon as possible. Because my family.